Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify. Hey guys, um, just a quick one. The EPO that's coming out um, today, uh, we had some technical issues. I think it's the first time we've had them. Uh, the, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an intro before um, you, we, we crack on with the actual content. So today I'm speaking with uh, Rob, Rob Thomas Styler. He is the senior partner manager there for UK, Nordics, APAC, et cetera. And he's had about five years experience in strategies related to content generation. I'm sure many of you will know him. Um, we have a, an integration with their platform um, to try and basically provide uh, a better experience per segment in terms of content um, for uh, different types of um, user, uh, you know, VIPs, discount hunters, lapsed customers, churn candidates, that kind of thing. Anyway, so he, he um, is focusing his talk on what he calls the three stages of the content journey. And uh, so we talk about that very briefly, and then uh, he starts with the first part of that, uh, that journey, which is all about for him finding customers. And uh, he's starting off talking about um, and explaining what Core Web Vitals is. So that's where it picks off. So I hope it's of value. I hope it's uh, enjoyable. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you to it. Great time to discuss it. It's actually something that our brands and retailers are bringing up now. Um, we put it up over the last six to eight months. We knew these changes were coming. What it means is that Google is now putting a much heavier onus on mobile browsing experience. Right. Essentially, they are penalizing shops or retail online retailers if they have a low page speed load time or if their seo is not properly mapped and they've created this score called lighthouse score or page speed insight score um, and they're basically ranking the website on the practices so they call this core web vitals and what it basically means is it's like a, uh, a good a bad or an ugly score which goes red amber green um, and, and if you're not in the green you, you're going to see some changes in your site ranking and seo uh, because Google want to put the best sites higher up on their rankings to generate more traffic and more conversion for their customers, which is all of us as retailers and brands. So essentially, those core web vitals are quite interesting because in the last 18 months, and we're not going to mention the pandemic because everyone has and everyone will, but let's think about how behavior has changed. Ultimately, we're all shopping in different ways. I hated browser buying on a mobile before. You yeah. Know, it helped that I upgraded my mobile from an iPhone 6. Other mobiles are available to a more <laughs> 21st century tool. But in doing so, I started really enjoying the mobile browsing experience more. Now, mm -hmm. I saw some figures, which I'm sure are now out of date, which suggested that by the end of 2021, these were from December, 2021, we would see 57% of people shopping on mobile before the end of the year. Yeah. I'm convinced if we look at our customer data, I know one customer is seeing almost 80%. Now, they're quite a specific niche. 80% yeah. of their customers are transacting on mobile now. So if you think of it that way, you've got Google making sites, as we discussed, finding your store harder to do. It's harder to find stores that aren't performing because Google will, will de-rank them. It's also harder to shop if the site loads slowly. You get frustrated. You can't see the content. You can't find the products. It's annoying. You put your phone down or you go somewhere else. Yeah. So Web Vitals, other than being um, a really strong talking point, actually really plays into the, the business of today. More people are shopping on their devices, mobily, mobile, sorry, mobile devices. Uh, yeah. Tablet still plays, but it's a small aspect. Less yeah. people are sat at their desks shopping. Uh, and if they are, maybe they're sat on a Zoom call shopping on their mobile. Yeah. Uh, it's an irreparable behavioral change backed up by the changes Google are doing to ranking. So I think, yeah, finding a store, your store needs to be super fast. Your store needs to be super stable and it needs to rank high and then it needs to be quick and easy to shop. Mm. I guess takes us on to the second stage, right? Because if your shop is loading slowly and it's not working very well, customers aren't going to enjoy the process. They're not going to spend money. Um, so one of our key focuses as Styler at the moment is to, um, is to really help that process, make the content generation easier, make it quicker, make it more stable, make it rank better and make it faster. Right. Uh, if you can reduce page page load times down beneath one second 
and avoid what, what is called um, a cumulative layout shift, which for, in English basically means you've got a lot of excess code that's all changing up to the point the website loads and renders the content for the customer. Yeah. You basically, you can reduce that by in, you know, following a few best practices, reducing your cumulative layout shift, which means you, you render content in advance as best you can for mobile users. And what that then does is when you land on the site, everything's loaded, it's ready. There's no excuses. There's nothing for me to go, Phil, this is awful. I've got to go. You know, I'm not going to shop here. Um, and I'll spend money. So, yeah, that, that's kind of how the Core Web Vital changes, the changes in customer behavior over the last 18 months, pre-pandemic, actually. You know, these, this, this trend is going ahead well before we all got locked indoors. Yeah. Um, but then we got the interesting part, right? And this is why we started chatting back in, uh, it would have been early December, you know, we needed to sort of think about how, as a company, we were in, investing in our content for our customers rather mm -hmm. than just producing beautiful, compelling purchasing experience, you know, which is what Stylet does. We needed to also personalize that and, and add segmented options. So we, we reached out to, to you guys at Segmentify and had that chat. And I think we've got a couple of clients using it right now and having some great results. But it's all about this conversion. Mm -hmm. You can get a beautifully stable website that loads great, looks great. You can make great content. If it doesn't convert, if it doesn't address those customer needs, mm. all of it is in vain. So yeah, really excited that we could uh, go on that journey with you guys and start to build that, that content rather than just being beautifully visually compelling and engaging yeah. and converting, mm. but also addressing those specific customer segments and personalized elements, which um, I'm yeah. really excited to share more. I can't just yet, but when we speak next, I'm sure we can share a bit more detail on that as well. Yeah, no, totally. Just going back to, because um, obviously, you know, a lot of the, the stuff on the core web vitals and, and so on is something that I don't know an awful lot about, but obviously responsive, um, you know, websites, responsive um, solutions have been around for quite a while now. Right. I mean, years ago, I remember, is it responsive? Is it responsive? Is your app responsive? Is your website responsive? Whatever. So why has, uh, and apologies if you don't know any, don't know, but like why has core web vitals, had to come out like if we've been working on responsive sites and solutions for a long time now is it basically been failing or something and they've had to up the gear or what i think it's a very good question i think it's more of an evolution than an eventual finishing point um if you think of what responsive means to customers it means that your site works right it's a kind of for me it's very much a binary step forward is it yes or no does your site work does your site generate well and, and one of the main features of 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 styler back when it was launched in 2013 with the content management system yeah is is how can we make sure that all of that content loads on mobile loads on tablet all your breakpoints are covered and, and that's something that we address then. Yeah. But markets moved, right? Once we, yeah, and you're right. A lot of people have maybe taken a little longer to adjust their tech or or to have the capabilities um, to make yeah. sure responsive elements are, are covered across all breakpoints or all user devices, to use a, a non-technical term. Yeah. That's the first step, I think, in, in how we tackle this content problem, which is make a website, does it work for everybody? And then you've got other aspects like accessibility, you know, can I use this if I have, um, you know, yeah. issues with access, you know, if I struggle with hard of hearing or if I have, you know, for instance, color blindness, you know, how else can I inter interact with this website? That's also something that's that's coming in the future, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, first step, does it work on all devices for all people uh, accessing my website? Yeah, and then what comes next is, okay, so it works, we've, we've crossed that bridge. Um, Google are probably thinking we've got lots of customers spending lots of money on Google ads, but also investing in SEO best practice. And the SEO industry is huge and full of very, very smart, talented people. Mm -hmm. What they'll then look to do as a business, and I'm not going to speak for Google on this one, but my understanding and my, my interpretation is that the next thing they have to do is bring everyone into line. It's right. You've got responsive. That's OK, but we need you to do better. We need you to revolutionize and improve continually that yeah. experience that you're taking out as brands and retailers, you owe it to the consumer, which ultimately Google represents. They are an ad delivery platform. Yeah. They help find stuff. They help us sell to us yeah. using all of their different products and feeds. So I kind of see it like yeah. you could characterize them. They are like the ringmaster. They're yeah. getting everyone into line and saying, look, guys, great work on the responsive stuff, but you're kind of oh. behind on the mobile browsing. Yeah sorted and, and i think it's a great initiative um it's obviously more work for brands and, and that's kind of why we 
we produce front end. It's like we've got a new product that's a PWA, which is a progressive web app, which means that the user experience on mobile is as good as it is on desktop, super fast, super stable. And what we're then trying to do is help people navigate these new requirements from Google wow. and really make sure they understand what the, what the technical lingo is. You know, what does this actually mean for my business? Well, in a nutshell, you progress, um, you're, you're truly responsive, good. Now you've got to be truly fast and mo load really well on mobile. Yeah. And let's think back, right? When we were having these responsive conversations, 3G was a thing, right, dude? It's, it's, it's moved. It's 5G now. I, I've, I've, I've just recently got a 5G device. I haven't been to London to use it yet. I live out in the sticks, so no access. I can't wait to see what that looks like. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. So, you know, I think that's a very valid question. I see it rather as an evolution. Yeah. Google no, the app the consumer. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense, and I like that actually. They are they are the ringmaster. You know, they're kind of like cracking the whip, you know, and pushing it all forward, which is cool. Um, let's let's go. I'm 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 interested to know a little bit more about <clears throat> content itself. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, this has been your award for quite a while now, and, yeah. and certainly in terms of Styler. Um, what? How far down the route do you go? So you provide great technology in order to create content. Yeah. Um, do you, is it literally a tech stack that lets the brand or the agency crack on and build their own content? Or do you provide a kind of wraparound best practice around, for example, um, how to build it, what works, what doesn't, you know, what does responsive actually, how does responsive kind of, um, you know, work, if you like, within that mobile environment? Is it different to desktop? And also, like, my other sort of sub question to it is what is the world of content like now? For example, you know, from the world I'm at, it's all about converting a customer with product rec, merch, search, etc. What what does it look like from a content point of view? Is it everybody's doing it? Is it still a growing thing? Tell us all about that side of it. I think I'll answer the last one first and the first one second, if I may, yeah. because that's a sure. really valid point. What what is the world of content doing right now? I think there are themes in e-commerce, and I've seen a few yeah. uh, you know, themes in everything. There are themes in waves and trends. Content's never changed in the sense that if you have good content, customers will shop and remember you. If you have bad content, you will be remembered for the wrong reasons. So I don't think content's going anywhere. I think it still has to be at the top of a brand's list. You know, if your website looks shoddy, yeah. you should something about it. it it's an impression of your business for the world to see so i don't think it's going to ever go anywhere in terms of how it's changed yeah definitely that the challenges have changed for a retailer from from making things work on different devices to to now looking at new ways to optimize the user experience so for sure i think we're seeing a lot more integrated tech in in a, in a content delivery system um yeah essentially we're now having to be more competitive as content producers. So brands come up with brilliant ideas. Uh, in some cases, those brilliant ideas never make it to the website. So speed is key. And I'll come on to that with your second or your first question. Um, yeah, yeah. That's the second. Sure. So what's happening in the world of content? We're, in, we're integrating more devices, um, loyalty programs, personalization tools, product recommendation tools. So what we've done as a business is we've built new ways of integrating those tools and making that easy and out of the box, which in the past can be a bit of work. Yeah. Um, so yeah that's one thing we've had to do as a business we've had to really up our game uh picking really really good partners some of whom we've worked with for some time uh yeah. building that out and also there are many of them right there are many content providers and there are many many more merchandising tools so you've got to pick the best ones you've got to be strategic about which ones you integrate and um, as well as that you've got to make sure it works you've got to make sure that this is a great user experience and a great customer experience. So what I mean by that is the user, the person that uses our product, it has to work, it has to be easy to implement, and it has to solve their business needs. Because all of these cool te technological advances don't mean diddly squat if you can't convert a customer and make them money. That's the bottom line. Yeah. So for me, it's, it's about being more agile as a business, integrating better tech quicker, and then making sure the customer, our client, which is the retailer, has very easy processes, workflows, delivery, and it works for the end user and they spend money. So yeah, that, that's why I see content. It's, it's less about producing novel new ideas and more about integrating at scale with the business needs and challenges on a one by one level because every customer is different. I guess in a nutshell, those are the challenges we're facing. And then you add on to that all of the challenges of making a site faster, 
integrating all these complex te technological items whilst maintaining speed. Mm -hmm. That's a big challenge. That's something we've been working on for some time to produce front end, mm -hmm. uh, which is an API focused uh, mm -hmm. tool, which which doesn't require any any um, integrations to be built. You know, mm -hmm. one integration for many customers. Everything's API focused, and that's one of the benefits yeah. of looking at headless infrastructure going forward. Yeah. So I guess that's the other challenge is how do customers tackle headless, and are there tools on the market that they can afford? Yeah, uh, and that's the thing I stress. Mm -hmm. what we've tried to do is be affordable and not a blocker there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and how do they do it? How does it work? How does that actually look? And that's usually where we're involved agency partners. So alongside all these challenges, there's not just your tools, there's not just your partners of, of other tech brands, there's also your agency partners. How yeah. are they helping customers understand the business critical challenges to execution? How are they getting it to completion? Yeah. Uh, your other question, yeah. I mean, Styler looks at three main features, well, things we aim to achieve. One is... Yeah. Anyone can use our platform, have a beautiful, brilliant idea, scribble it on the back of a napkin, run to the office, chuck it on a page, mm. test that page, publish that page, see if it works. Yeah. Um, check your, your analytics data. You know, is it working? You know, is a content segmentation feature that we've launched, is it working for customers? Is it converting them? That's, that's where we aim to be and, and where we are and have been since 2013 is the ability for anyone with any degree of technical knowledge can get yeah. online, use Styler's editor, produce content, sit back and yeah, yeah. exactly what I wanted to produce. Yeah. And we can help with best practices. Yes, that's that's kind of the next point you made quite nicely is if customers can do it themselves, amazing. If they want extra support, we offer it. Best practice, we have a, a, a small but very, very capable consulting team and design team who yeah. support our larger brands with their commercial and, and creative challenges. You know, we say, look, yeah. maybe not that, maybe something different. But yeah, that, that's essentially the, the challenge we solve for brands is, you know, making it easy, making it straightforward and making it more affordable because mm -hmm. gone are the days when, you know, you could probably write off two or three developers or freelancers, um, especially as a small business. You know, if you're a big business, fair enough, you've got the budget. If you're small and you've got a three or four person team, we have one customer, for instance, a four person team and one went out maternity leave. The others could collaborate using Styler. They could all work in the same platform. If they use their traditional tool yeah. um, or their traditional systems, they would never have got the work done. Uh, so that's the other thing. We allow people to collaborate across disciplines. So marketing can collaborate with e-commerce. E-commerce and IT can collaborate with each other. Um, yeah. Saving time and money, essentially. And hopefully, as we know, with good content strategies, converting more customers. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Let's move on to like um, on the same thread, really. I'm interested in adoption, right? So clearly, I mean, from the world I'm in, personalization is quite a mature space. You know, whether you talk about product recs, on-site search, merch, et cetera, push notifications and so on. Um, what about content? I mean, <clears throat> in, um, in, in the brand's world, you know, in a retailer's world, clearly we know from all of our um, backgrounds that they're incredibly busy teams. Um, doing all sorts of stuff. So how have you noticed any trends in terms of the amount of uh, priority or space given to creating um, content um, on an ongoing basis for, um, you know, for themselves? Or is it is it still something that is they, they would like to do but don't get time to do? You know, what, what does that adoption look like? It's a very interesting one. I think it all comes down to ownership. Uh, ultimately, the people in those businesses producing those content, can they or can they not produce an idea over, over a weekend and then put it into production on Monday? That's the, that's the main blocker for most of these businesses. Yeah. So adopting a new content strategy, it almost creates a paralysis. You know, I know how much work's involved. I've got to get costs signed off. I've got to speak to numerous people and, and you know, ask for permission because it costs money. It costs me time and it costs yeah. my business money. So... Adoption is it's as long as it is wide, really. If you can remove those blockers from your customer and you can say, yeah. look, your content can be realized. Yes, you can do that, that, that subdomain landing page under the same domain as the rest of your site and wrap everything together, getting the benefit out of your SEO campaigns. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can produce the content, Phil, for Phil, Phil uh, Enterprises uh, launching a new product, but it's tomorrow. Can I do it? The answer in some cases is yes. And, and I think the other thing is, as we see more people leaving or 
let's let's say it's probably the same with personalization. If if you if you go with a monolithic tech stack, right, you're going to have an out of the box personalization feature. It isn't always going to work as well as a dedicated third party who builds that specific tool. It all kind of comes down to that composable element. So adoption, I think, is all down to the blocker. It's all down to um, how how well the tool performs and whether you're willing to invest in that tool. And, and then ultimately, it comes down to to ease of use. You know, yeah. adoption is all based on ease of use. If you're working in a, in a, in a very large monolithic tech stack and yeah. the content management tool is is rubbish or it's difficult for you, you know, and there are some great tools out there for sure at doing individual items. Very rarely do tools do everything very well. It's it's very very rare for that to happen. So I think when you're yeah. looking at those particular use cases, you know, and there's a specific need, you know, there are tools to solve it. Um, so we're kind of seeing the big change, going back to your previous question, what's the big change? People are maybe picking best in breed solutions and bringing that all together in a sort of mm. composable way. You know, the composable commerce argument has been around for a while. You know, yeah. if you were a supercar, you know, yeah. You wouldn't let me, Phil, if we were in a racing team, you know, you're number one driver, I'm number two driver. You would not let me put uh, a Ford, I don't know, Ford Focus engine into a Formula One car. You'd want the best engine you could buy. Um, let's say that engine is your product recommendations tool. You're not going to slot in something to your infrastructure mm. if, it's, uh, if it's a choice. But if it's out of the box, you probably put up with it. So adoption in those use cases can be lower. and that, But that's often where the greatest need rises. Yeah. However... The next sort of factor to consider is is cost, and that's something that, that really does stop people adopting these solutions: is cost, time, and perceived risk. Yeah. And the third one, and, and, and something we find anytime we have those risk blockers, we do tend to find we can solve them really quickly for customers, which is great. Yeah. Uh, and then the next part, a fun part, comes is right. Well, you've optimized us, you've optimized CMS. Mm. Now we need to look at taking that Ford Ford Focus engine. I know someone else. I know a really good segmentation partner. It's integrated into the platform. Yeah. Let's make that adoption phase advance. Let's move you forward. And if you have that approach, I think adoption can be very, very strong, very, very high. It can be very, very quick. Yeah. But it's about it's about also looking past your own tech, and past your own infrastructure, and saying yeah. what else can we improve, and then passing those learnings to your customers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's that's cool. sounds good. Sounds good. I mean. Um, it's interesting you mentioned segmentation when the final sort of little topic I wanted to cover with you was, um, you know, I was chatting to Eva, Eva Pasco a few weeks ago. And, uh, you know, she was saying how, as I'm sure a lot of us are pretty surprised in a way, you know, that um, the same customers seeing the same homepage every time. Right. And I was like, OK, yeah, you know, and I, I, when, when you when you begin to sort of surf around with that in your mind, you do realize how um, kind of generic often the, the user experience is, you know, on, on homepage or wh wherever, you know, when you're, when you're, when you've built a bit of relationship with the brand, should we say, and then it's the same thing, you know, it's like, as a user, I it all the time. It's like, hang on, invest in me, you know, I'm using the yeah, same. Yeah. So she was saying, you know, she was saying like that, that's nuts these days, you know, to be doing that. And then, I suppose then that that brought us onto the whole area of the point that segmentation has been around for a long time, you know, and the importance of it has been known for an awful long time as well. And yet this situation is happening where it's not really being utilized to its full capacity. And, um, you know, so, so that, for example, if you are a, uh, if you have been detected by the segmentation tool or the machine learning or whatever, that you are a VIP user or you are a, a churn candidate or you're a you know a um a lapsed customer or you're a discount hunter or whatever it might be um you know the ability to utilize that segmentation through both the combination of fantastic content that you can easily spin up on you know to multiple segments to capitalize on that experience coupled with fantastic real-time personalized recommendations search etc um, has got to be like the next level, right? For sure, for sure. I mean, it's it's something that we, we've, we've been doing for about three or four years um, mm. because we know that we're as good as the content enrichment processes. It, delivering it is the first step. It's a bit like, I guess we go back to our ringmaster um, yeah. analogy here. We are almost taking customers outside of their comfort zone into a new area uh, and now there are, there are some people doing this for a long, long time. I know some retailers, and I can mention a few, 
have been working in this space, optimizing very early on, and they've been doing it a long time. But the bulk, the bulk of, of, of the people we speak to <clears throat> at this sort of consideration phase for, yeah. for that purpose. But they shouldn't be because it's no. been around so long. People, yeah. used to, people expect it. Now, I'm a horrible customer in terms of online shopping because I'm, my impatience level is, you know, off the scale. If, if, if I go back to a site and I think they're under, under investing in me as a, as a buyer, you know, I will shop elsewhere. It, it, it's tricky because I expect... And obviously, working in e-commerce, you see some really cool use cases. You mm. kind of expect every brand to have that thought process, but they don't. They can't because they, they're waiting for that ringmaster, be that a, a technology partner, be that an agency, be that a consultant, to come and show them these tools, show them mm. the power, and ultimately give them a chance to see the volume of, 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 of benefit. Mm. Um, show them the value, right? That's yeah. kind of our job as, as helping these brands revolutionize and, and forward and advance their thinking. Mm. We need to lick them into shape in the same way with Google and the Core Web Vitals. Make your sites work responsibly. Make your sites fast so that people enjoy using them. We have to be that force of, of, of good in showing customers what they can do with content, how they mm. can personalize it, invest back in the customer. Because if they don't, that customer yeah. will not invest with them. So yeah. I think it's a very valid point. And, and yeah, we're probably a couple of years behind where we'd all like to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's why we're working together, right? It's yeah, no, totally. Totally. I mean, the the proof will be in the pudding as well. I mean, you mentioned at the beginning where we're we're in we're in process right now, working with a few brands together, which is great. There there are ultimately going to be results from that. We already know, you know, from our individual tech stacks that we drive conversion and um, bounce rate down and dwell time and so on, you know, and and that's all linked to what we're talking about. But I think the next level will really be when we get you know more and more proof points that it. You know, if you think about the advancement of what custom behavior is like, you know, me, what am I like? I am a bargain hunter, right? That's it. You might be, you know, Mr. Mr. Cool, you know, Mr. Authentic, Mr. Wants a different look, wants to be, you know what I mean? And, you, you, you know, I'm going to be going to a website and if the machine knows me and the content knows me, bang, they're going to get me. I'm going to buy because yeah. I want that discount. I want that good value for money, you know, um, at, at not the expense of quality, you know, healthy balance. But I don't want to look at the latest expensive range. That's your bag. You yeah. know, you're, you're distinguished. Yeah. He says that here in a tie-dye shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm looking for the bargain. I want it. So when I when I get the – I'm not going to mention any brands because, um, well, I don't want to. But, um, you know, like when you get the email, I mean, I know obviously email and segmentation have been around for, for, for donkey's years. And I'm, I'm still getting an email going, What? Why have you sent me that email, man? You, you, you should know me better than that, honestly. But then you, you transfer that to the web experience. So obviously an email has been around for a long, long time. But mm -hmm. from what I'm gathering and talking to other people, yourself included, Ava and so on, is that actually the online experience is still miles behind in terms of this. And yet the functionality and technology is there now. So I think if we carry on doing what we're doing, and obviously others will be doing what they're doing, and we can prove these points, we can start shouting about the sort of results that I think you talked about actually in the um, in the webinar that you did with Morat, right? So, yeah, those were the preliminary test results. Yeah, exactly, right? So check that out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But on top of that, you know, once we have finished our full trials and we've gathered, because obviously these segments can take a while to build but yeah. from inception, right? Um, we can start chatting about that, and I think we're doing a webinar later on in the year and so on to showcase some information, right? That's correct. It's be in June, I think, date to be confirmed. But yeah, it's it's in it's in our content calendar, so we're excited about that. Yeah, no, totally. And it'd be really interesting to see how how um, we can start to, you know, talk to people more about what it how it's actually genuinely um, driving results, which is what everybody wants at the end of the day for both their clients, their businesses you know and, and themselves and their jobs you know so anyway we could probably talk all day um so i do thank you so much for for the chat um and uh guys i hope that you uh, enjoyed actually i haven't i haven't asked you a couple of things actually um i'm, I'm jumping the gun there a bit if anybody is um interested in talking to rob about this content journey the stuff we've been talking about today How's the best way to get hold of you, Mr. Bonds? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, either either ping me ping me directly on LinkedIn uh, or, or through um, the styler.com website. Um, cool. So you find, or, or please do reach out on my email, which is robert.thomas at styler.com. Uh, yeah. And I can come back to you to, to arrange a, a chat. Um, 
you know, more than happy. I think that the way that we operate is, is on a consultancy level. And one thing I wanted to share for based on your recent comment. Yeah. Digital is changing. I bought my turkey at Christmas this year. It's a bit of a weird anecdote, but I thought a nice one to finish on. Bought my turkey at Christmas, stood in, the, stood in the, the freezing cold at 6.30 in the morning on a Friday, waiting to get my turkey. The line went round the block. It was about an hour and a half. But uh, wow. en enough of the sob story. I then go home. A couple of weeks later, I'm getting email targeted from the butchers. The butchers doesn't have an e-com store, right? They're just completely bricks and mortar. Yeah. investing in email and personalized email outreach based on what I'm buying each time I'm going. And I'm thinking things are moving. Things are moving really, really fast. I just thought it was a nice one to share on the basis of, of adoption and taking on new tools. If yeah. a, a small privately owned uh, butcher, they used to do fantastic cheese and, and halloumi and things like that. So a fantastic little shop. If they can adopt and adapt their strategy, their commerce strategy, it's not e-commerce, it's, it's commerce strategy. Yeah. Every we can and and yeah happy to to be reached out to and anyone who yeah. wants to have a chat uh, or we can refer partners or agencies that we work with that's that's how we do it you know let's uh, yeah. share, share our learnings and um yeah. and help our brands brilliant well I, I usually ask at the end you know a golden nugget to take away but i think you've just done it it's all about the turkey it's all about the turkey and don't queue in the cold if you don't have to <laughs> that's my feedback yeah no, that's, that's really good wisdom actually thanks for that <laughs> anyway right so thank you so much Rob for your time today. thank you ever, ever so much everyone for listening and watching to, to the man to the man Robert and uh, it just remains for me to say that uh, if you want to be involved um, or you want to check out all the shows um, including Rob's one again anything in, in the future that comes out as well as the previous ones just sign up at segmentify.com forward slash EGS um, otherwise, if you, as I say, if you want to be involved, if you've got any topics you want to us uh, to research and talk about, um, just give me a shout anytime, phil at segmentify.com. All right. But, um, yeah, have a wonderful day uh, or evening, uh, morning, whatever you're doing at the moment. And um, after you've listened to, to this or watched it, um, thank you again, Rob, for a great chat. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me and, um, all the best to everyone. And, um, I'll speak soon. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, see you all again soon, guys. Take care and have a good uh, rest of your day.